Hello and welcome back to Bicycle X and another edition of Anniversary Albums. Today we're going to be looking at albums that are having a significant anniversary in the month of November 2023. For those of you who are new to this series, when I say a significant anniversary, I'm talking about one that ends in a 5 or a 0. So 50th, 25th, 35th, 40th, that sort of thing. You'll get the hang of it as we go along. As usual, I've picked 10 albums. It was a wide open field to choose from, so I have left a lot out. So please do let me know in the comments which ones you think I should have included. And we'll start with an album that is having its 45th anniversary in the month of November. It was originally released on the 1st of November 1978. It's the debut album by this band, and it is the self-titled Midnight Oil also known as the Blue Meanie because of the dark blue cover. Um, Peter Kerr from the wonderful Rock Daydream Nation and I did a series of Midnight Oil videos. I will leave a link to the studio albums rank that we did in the description. Please do check those out. They're wonderful, wonderful shows as they always are when Peter's on the channel. This album's a really great debut album. The only thing that it suffers from is a really low budget production, so it doesn't sound the greatest. I'd love to hear a, a really good remix or a remaster of this album. But the songs on here are absolutely undeniable. It starts off with Powderworks, which is a song they would play throughout their career, so that gives you some idea of just how highly re they regarded that song. It's a really powerful song. You've got Head Over Heels, Dust, Used and Abused, another really great song. The really wonderful Surfing with a Spoon. You've got another Midnight Oil bona fide classic in Run By Night. And then you've got Nothing Lost, Nothing Gained, which is a longer song. It's about eight minutes long. It's kind of proggy. It's something that Midnight Oil would never really do again, but it's interesting to hear them going down that path. Definitely a, a, a really good debut album. Well worth checking out if you don't know it. The next album we're going to have a look at is having its 50th anniversary in the month of November. It was originally released on the 2nd of November 1973. It's a Beatles solo album and it is Ringo by Ringo Starr. This is the only post Beatles album that has all four Beatles on the record. They don't all play on the same song of course, but they're all here and they all write songs for Ringo as well. It starts off with John Lennon's I'm the Greatest, which is absolutely wonderful. That's the closest you get to a Beatles reunion because you have Ringo, John and George all on that song, along with Klaus Vorman and Billy Preston. You've got Have You Seen My Baby, which is written by Randy Newman. Um, you've got the absolutely wonderful photograph, which is written by Ringo and George Harrison. Absolutely brilliant single. Love that song to death. Then you've got what I think is the underrated gem on the album, which is Sunshine Life For Me, Sail Away Raymond, which is written by George Harrison. Love that song. You've got members of the band playing on that song. Um, you've got Your 16, which was a big hit single for him as well, the cover version of the old 50s song. You've got Devil Woman and Oh My My, which are two songs that are written by Ringo and Vinnie Poncia. Um, you've got Step Lightly, which Ringo writes himself, which I think is a charming little song. You've got the wonderful Six O'Clock, written by um, Paul and Linda McCartney. Really, really love that song, and Paul and Linda both appear on that song as well. Um, and then you've got um, You and Me, Babe written by George Harrison and Beatles roadie Mal Evans. Really nice way to close the album out. But as well as members of the band and members of the Beatles on this album, you've got an all-star cast. You've got Nicky Hopkins. You've got, as I said, Billy Preston. You've got Klaus Vorman. You've got, you know, uh, Harry Nilsson. Just wonderful. A lot of these all-star sort of session albums don't turn out very well. This one turned out absolutely great. I love this album. It's easily Ringo's best album in my humble opinion. And uh, it's a record that I still go and play on a regular basis. Absolutely love it. 
The next album we're going to have a look at is having its 45th anniversary in the month of November. It was originally released on the 3rd of November 1978, and that is All Mod Cons by The Jam. Now, I've done a Jam studio albums ranked with the wonderful John the Music Nut. Uh, you'll know him from The Contrarians and other channels. I'll leave a link to that in the description. This was probably, I think this ended up being my number one album, if I remember correctly. It's certainly right up there. I love the jam. I don't think they ever made a bad album, but this is right up there. So good. The title track, All Mod Cons, um, To Be Someone, uh, Didn't We Have a Nice Time. You've got Mr. Clean. You've got their wonderful, wonderful cover version of the Kinks, David Watts. Uh, you've got the in crowd, Billy Hunt. Fly, uh, A Bomb on Water Street, and um, Down in the Tube Station at Midnight. Really sort of atmospheric track that I always loved that they end the, the album with. Just top notch jam from beginning to end. Absolutely love this album. If you've not listened to the jam, this is a great place to start with them too, as far as I'm concerned. Because you get the mod stuff, you get a bit of the sort of punky feel, although it's not out and out punk. It's, um, yeah, it's the great sort of singer, uh, songwriting that you get from Paul Weller. Absolutely great place to start with the jam if you're not familiar with them. Definitely recommend it. The next album we're going to have a look at is having its 40th anniversary in the month of November. It was originally released on the 4th of November 1983. It's a bit of an underlooked al album in this artist's catalogue as far as I'm concerned. And that is Hearts and Bones by Paul Simon. This album didn't do very well when it was released. Didn't chart nearly as high as most of his other solo albums and certainly not as high as the one that came after it, which was Graceland. But I think this is a really underlooked gem in his catalogue. I love this album. Uh, it starts off with the wonderful allergies. Then you get the title track, Hearts and Bones which is a sort of a commentary on Paul Simon's short-lived marriage with uh, Carrie Fisher. You've got When Numbers Get Serious, you've got Think Too Much B, and then on side two you get Think Too Much A, so you've got sort of two different versions of that song. You've got Song About the Moon, you've got ah oh, the wonderful, beautiful uh, Rene and George Magritte with their dog after the war. Love that. You've got Cars Are Cars, and then you've got the late, great Johnny Ace, which memorializes three Johns. You've got Johnny Ace, you've got John F. Kennedy, and you've got John Lennon, who are all sort of mentioned obliquely a lot of the time in this song. Just a really good album. Definitely overlooked and definitely something that I think needs a, a, a critical reevaluation. I think it's a great album. The next album we're going to have a look at is having its 35th anniversary in the month of November. It was originally released on the 7th of November 1988. It was their first album for Warner Brothers. That is Green by R.E.M. So this was their jump to the major labels after um, several albums with IRS records. And um, it's a wonderful album. You know, I mean, this has got Pop Song 89, it's got Orange Crush. You know, those are sort of some of the big songs on here. But you've also got Get Up and You Are Everything. You've got Stand, that was a big single. Um, World Leader Pretend, I love that song. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful album. And uh, this would make them sort of, it was an incremental um step in their rise to stardom they were starting to get a lot more radio airplay with the last couple of albums they did with irs but then this one took them a step further and then of course the next one was out of time and that would absolutely bust them wide open into one of the biggest bands in the world when they had the the huge hit with losing my religion the next album we're going to have a look at is having its 45th anniversary in the month of November. 
It was originally released on the 10th of November 1978. It is the second album by this band and it is Give Em Enough Rope by The Clash. It was an interesting choice to have Sandy Perlman, who is, you know, best known as the, the brains, in a way, behind Blue Oyster Cult, produce a Clash album. Um, but it works. It, it's a really good album. It sounds good. Um, it's got a number of really good songs. Uh, I mean, it's got uh, Safe European Home. It's got English Civil War, which is one of my favorite Clash songs. Um, Tommy Gunn, Julie's been working for the Drug Squad, Last Gang in Town. Um, you know, you've got uh, Stay Free. You've got Guns on the Roof, another great Clash song. Um, All the Young Punks. Uh, yeah, it's a really great album. And of course, then after this would be their real commercial breakthrough with uh, London Calling. But this album is really, really good in its own right. It's a really good sort of, it's, it's got those punk elements, but you can also see them starting to move away and starting to expand their sound. The next album we're going to have a look at is having its 40th anniversary in the month of November. It was originally released on the 11th of November, 1983. It was a huge commercial comeback for this band as well. And that is 90125 by Yes. Now I know a lot of Yes fans don't particularly dig the 80s Yes. And I can kind of get that, but this album is undeniable as far as I'm concerned. It's a brilliant album. I mean, it's got this smash hit owner of a lonely heart on it, which I think is a brilliant song. But you've also got Hold On, which I think is great. It Can Happen is one of my favorite Yes songs. Absolutely love it. Changes. Definitely got some of those proggy elements sort of returning in changes, especially that really big opening instrumental part. Love it. You've got the great cinema, which of course was the band's name before John Anderson became involved in it again and they changed the name to Yes. They won a uh, Grammy for uh, cinema for best rock instrumental. You've got the wonderful Leave It. You've got our song, City of Love, and then Gorgeous Hearts that, that closes the album. Absolutely beautiful. I will defend this album to the hilt. I think it's one of the really good Yes albums. You know, it's very different from the 70s, yes, but I think quality-wise, it's up there with those albums. The next album we're going to have a look at is having its 40th anniversary also in the month of November. It was originally released on the 21st of November, 1983, and that is Seven and the Ragged Tiger by Duran Duran. Something a bit different. This has got some of Duran Duran's sort of well, best known songs on it, like The Reflex. I loved The Reflex when I was a kid. Absolutely loved that song and the film clip for it, you know, done in a live concert, but, you know, with a lot of um, effects on it, you know, the like wave coming out of the, the video screen behind them on stage and that sort of thing. Loved it. And I love the song to this day. You've got New Moon on Monday, which was a big hit for them. And you've got Union of the Snake, which was also a big hit for them. But you've also got songs like uh, Looking for the Cracks in the Pavement, I Take the Dice, Of Crime and Passion, um, Shadows on Your Side. And then you've got uh, Tiger, Tiger and the Seventh Stranger. This is a really strong Duran Duran album. Um, if, if you sort of only know the first couple of records, this is definitely worth getting into. It was sort of like a bit of a commercial peak for them as well. Those sort of first three albums were all huge. And then after that, they would take time off to do side projects and they would never be quite as big again. You know, they would still have some hits and that sort of thing later on down the road, but they'd never be quite the same again. The next album is also having its 40th anniversary in the month of November. It was also released on the 21st of November, 1983. So same day as Seven and the Ragged Tiger. It is my favorite album by this band. I mentioned this in our panel show where we talked about our 
bands where our favorite album is a live album, and that is U2's Under a Blood Red Sky. I'll leave a link to that panel in the description. This is the lovely red vinyl version that was released here in Australia. I don't know if it was released overseas or not, but it was, uh, if you can see there, it was sort of for the 1984 Australian tour that um, they did this sort of red vinyl version. But to me, this is just undeniable, wonderful U2 stuff. I believe that every version of the songs on here are the definitive versions of this song as opposed to the studio versions. It starts off with an absolutely kick-ass version of Gloria. You've got 11 o'clock TikTok, which I've always loved, one of my favorite early U2 songs. You've got a great version of I Will Follow. You've got Party Girl, which was like an obscure B-side that they decided to put on this album, which I always love. Um, you've got a brilliant version of Sunday Bloody Sunday. You've got the wonderful Electrico. You've got New Year's Day, which is, you know, one of the all-time classic U2 songs. And again, the version on here is just absolutely brilliant. And then you've got 40. Just a beautiful way to end the album. They would swap instruments a bit with um, uh, Adam Clayton playing the guitar and uh, The Edge playing the bass. Yeah, I mean, and then you have sort of like, the, you know, they would go off stage one by one and eventually you'd just have the crowd there just singing along, singing the song after the band had left the stage. I love that. Definitely my favourite U2 album, although I love a lot of U2 studio albums. To me, this is where it's at. And then the final album we're going to have a look at is a Stone Cold classic having its 55th anniversary in the month of November, originally released on the 22nd of November 1968. It is, of course, the self-titled album by the Beatles, also known as the White Album, of course, because of that cover. And I mean, what can you say about this album? I think I ranked this number two when I did my studio albums ranked to the Beatles. I'll leave a link to that in the description. It could easily be my number one. It always alternates for me between the White Album and Revolver for my favourite Beatles album. But I mean, you've got Back in the USSR, Dear Prudence, Glass Onion, Obla Dee Obla Da. You know, I could go through all these songs while my guitar gently weeps. Blackbird, Piggies. Ah, I mean, these are all, to me, absolute Stone Cold Beatles classics. You've got 30 songs on this double album. You know, Don't Pass Me By, Ringo's first solo writing credit for the Beatles. Um, Rocky Raccoon, I Will and Julia, two really, really beautiful acoustic songs. One by Paul, one by John. You've got Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey, which is a wonderful rocker. You've got the great sort of psychedelic sexy Sadie. you got the absolutely kick-ass Helter Skelter, sort of proto-metal from the Beatles. Um, you've got the beautiful Long, Long, Long from George. You've got Revolution 1, Savoy Truffle, Cry Baby Cry. Revolution 9, this is the, you know, the track that absolutely divides people. Most people absolutely hate it. I will defend Revolution 9. I think it's absolutely wonderful sound collage. I think it works on every level. And then it closes with the beautiful Good Night, sung by Ringo, written by John, a lullaby to his son Julian. Beautiful orchestration by George Martin on it. I love every track on this album. It's a great Beatles album. I mean, again, there's no such thing as a bad Beatles album in my humble opinion, but this one is just, you know, it's top of the tree as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, you have it. Those are my 10 anniversary albums for the month of November uh, 2023. Please, as I said, let me know in the comments which of these albums you like, maybe which ones you don't even care for so much. Please let me know which ones I left out because I know I left out a ton. And you guys, sometimes you'll pick the ones that were on my longer list and sometimes you will think of albums that never occurred to me. And I love it when you guys do that. Even though it makes me sort of kick myself, it makes me want to go out and listen to those albums. So I really thank you when you do that. 
Please do like, share and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. If you're new to the channel, please go and have a look at some of my other videos. I have everything playlisted. So if you want to see some of my other anniversary albums shows, there's a playlist for those. If you want to see some of my studio albums ranked shows, there's a playlist for those. If you want to see my appearances on other people's channels, like the aforementioned Rock Daydream Nation, there's a playlist for those as well. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Bicycle Eggs on Instagram and Twitter. And before anyone asks, yes, I am going to keep calling it Twitter. I also have a dedicated Bicycle Eggs Facebook page. Please come and give those all a follow and join in the conversation. I'd really love to have you there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.